Hi all and thank you for joining me for yet another foray into the exciting world of Maths Methods 3 and 4, determining rules for graphs of circular functions. Now, remember in maths what you can do forwards, you can actually always do backwards. And in many cases we spend so much time in maths teaching you what to do forwards, we never really show you how to do it backwards. And this is what this video is going to be doing today. So. Remember that every single time you draw a sine or cosine curve, you've got to look at amplitudes and periods. You've got to look at whether it's moved. You've got to try and think about what real-world situations could they flip that with. And I always say, you know, if you look at an idea of a sine curve, this could actually be a hill. This could be ground level. This could be some sea. And ultimately, you've got a mass question there. You know, how high is the hill? How wide is the hill? If you wanted to... I don't know, fill the valley, what would you need to do, all sorts of stuff. And I know we haven't done a lot yet, but differentiation, integration, finding areas, all sorts of stuff can happen with sine and cosine curves, which is why your CAS calculator is going to be an absolute godsend later on. So, make sure you understand amplitude, period, and what vertical translations and horizontal translations do to the period and the amplitude. We've dealt literally in that last video with the idea of what each of these things show and tell you to do with each of your sine and cosine. But now I'm actually going to give you the graphs and ask you to find the information to get back to the original equation. All right? That's just as valid and just as important. It's like modeling real world situations. And in many cases, that's how computers work. We model real life situations. So. Example one, a function is given as shown below, it has a general form of y equals a sine nt. Now the good news is they will always tell you what form they want the equation to be in. So in this situation, y equals a sine nt, find a and n. Well, what is a and n? Well, the amplitude is the difference between, or is halfway between the maximum and minimum. Now my advice is you would always remember it that way. What is the maximum on this graph? It's 5. What is the minimum? It is minus 5. So actually, in this situation, life is easy. The amplitude is 5, because I know the total distance between the two is 10. Half them is 5. So the amplitude is 5. Now, the reason I say always do the maximum and the minimum is because if they've actually translated the graph up, then you could make a horrible mistake. So for example, had this been at 6 and this had been at 4, then you might have turned around and said, well, the amplitude is 6 without noticing that they've actually squidged the graph up just a little bit. So that's a trick. Next thing, what do we need to know? We need to know the period. Now, the period of a graph is given by 2 pi over m. Well, we know the period here. Luckily, this has been given in terms of radians. So we know the period is 12. 2 pi over n. Swap those over gives me n is 2 pi over 12 which gives me pi on 6. And lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, I have my two values. You need to reform the equation to give you 5 sine of pi on 6 times t. That would be your final answer. So the only thing that I really needed to know there was read off the maximum, the minimum, and the value of the period, and just use the information I have. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Another function is given below. All right, this one obviously has been moved up, like totally, totally moved up. But we can use the information to find A, N, and B. All right, I know it's going to say and B, so I'm going to write there and B, because we can. So first things first, what is my amplitude? Well, let's look at what the highest value is. It's 5. What's the lowest value? It's negative 1. That means there's a difference of 6. Harvard is 3. So before I even know it, I know my period. Sorry, period. Goodness. I know my amplitude is equal to 3. Thank you very much. Do I know the period of my graph? Well, that seems to be the median. That seems to be the median. And the difference between the two is 10. And we know the period is 2 pi over n. So what did we say it was? 10 is equal to 2 pi on n. So n would be 2 pi on 10, which is pi on 5. So that's my period. Ooh, so that's n found and then b. Well, how are we going to find B? That seems really confusing. If you think about it, we know the median is at 3. Oh, we know the median, sorry, is 3 from the bottom and 3 from the top, which passes through 2. That point should realistically pass through 0. And so we now know B 
is equal to plus 2. So therefore, we could restate the equation as y is equal to 3 sine pi on 5 times t plus 2. See what's happening? Now again, it's really, really important if they give you this information that you can form an equation. But they're not always going to give you a graph. Sometimes they're going to try and trick you. And I talked about it in a previous uh, video. And in this situation, they've given you the range. So the range is between minus 3 and 3. That just means the maximum is 3. The minimum is 3 which means that actually the amplitude can be found out as being, sorry, the minimum is minus 3. The amplitude is actually 3. So before we start, we got the amplitude. Period of 10. Great. Thank you very much for giving me the period. That's 2 pi over n. So we know that n is 2 pi over 10. And that, once again, is pi on 5. So now, what's all this t equals 3.5 plus y when y equals 3? Well, if we go back now to say, well, we now got y is equal to a, we know is 3, times sine. We know n now is pi on 5 times t, but we've got to find this epsilon business. Well, to find epsilon, what two pieces of information do they need to give me? Well, I've got three unknowns at the moment. If they give me two of the unknowns, I can find a third one, and lo and behold, that's what happens. So when y is 3 equals 3 sine pi on 5 times t of 3.5 plus epsilon, divide both sides by 3, gives me 1 equals the sine of pi on 5 times 3.5 plus epsilon. When you do the inverse sine of 1, what do we get? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, we get pi on 2. Yeah, so pi on 2 as one of the values. Now there are infinitely many values, like lots and lots of values. But then we get pi on 2 is equal to pi on 5 times 3.5. Well, 3.5 is 7 on 2 plus epsilon. Now, why did I do that? Just to try and make my life easier. So pi on 2 is equal to 7 pi on 10 plus epsilon. So pi on 2 minus 7 pi on 10 gives me epsilon. So change it out. Oh, so it's 5 pi on 2 now becomes 5 pi on 10. So minus 2 pi on 10 which is minus pi on 5, is epsilon. And so therefore, restating my equation, you would have y is equal to 3 sine pi t on 5 minus pi on 5. Ladies and gentlemen, quick jaunt through the idea of determining rules for graphs of circular functions. Not too much that they can actually throw at you here, so long as you just understand how to apply that information. Okay? Now, just one, actually, I will throw one thing at the end here. If, for example, they've given me the same question and it had the range, but actually had, had it falling between sort of 5 and minus 1, then what you would have ended up with is you'd have had an equation that said y is equal to a sine nt plus epsilon plus b. Now, this plus b, they'll still only give you the same information, but what you've got to realize is that if the range is imbalanced. If it's imbalanced, and we know that actually it should have gone, so it, what is it, between 5 and minus 1, we know that that meant that the amplitude was 3, which meant that actually the median point was at 2, and that meant that the graph had been shifted up by 2. So that information, this range, actually can give you two pieces of information and give the amplitude but it can also help you find the value of b which in that situation would have been plus two All right now that's just the throwaway because i know some of the questions in the textbook actually have those type of questions in them for you but yeah thanks very much for watching i look forward to seeing you next time thanks for joining us for that video it was really good having you now if you'd like to know when the next video is coming why not click on subscribe alternatively head on over to mathsguru.com where you can watch all of the videos on its own dedicated website while otherwise watch the video that's just popped up it'll be part of this series all right take care see you again soon